Welcome to this new video of my YouTube series Getting Started with Eclipse Micro Profile 3.0. In this video, I'm going to cover the Micro Profile JWT authentication specification. So, if you're using JWT for your services to authenticate and to, to authorize users to access different resources, this specification is perfect for you. Specification makes sure that the incoming uh, HTTP requests are properly parsed, so they will extract the JWT token inside the authorization bearer header and will create a principle out of it. We'll use the JWT groups to create Java security roles and we'll also make the JWT token injectable inside your application. For a quick demo, I created a simple microprofile only project running on Open Liberty, and I will not use a full setup with Keycloak, for example, to create a JSON web token. I will call use a simple tool from Adam Beam, the Jotonizer. It's a a project to create JSON web tokens and public and private keys for local testing, and I will use it this to, to demonstrate to you how this specification works. For the application, I uh, created a simple JuxRS application and used the annotation at login config to specify that this application uses the microprofile JSON web token authentication method in the background. And now we want to protect our JuxRS endpoints. So here I've created a book endpoint which returns a simple book, but only users with the roles admin are allowed to access it. Furthermore, I'm injecting the Java security principle here to, to show you that this is also done in the background. So the JWT is um, parsed and the principle is created. And also here we can inject the JSON web token later on, so the, the plain JSON web token. What we can also do, as the JWT has a lot of claims in it, there is a set of predefined claims in the specification which have to be present, but you can specify more and access it um, both via injection, CDI injection, or you can use the, the token and call the get claim method and access um, attribute of your choice. So here um, I've added two more attributes to the JSON web token, an administrator ID and also an administrator level, which we then will extract and display the value in the console. And only if you're authorized and uh, authenticated and have the authorization to get this endpoint here, so you have the role admin, then you're are able to get a response from this endpoint. I've created a, another endpoint, orders, to show you the, the opposite. So uh, the Java security annotations also have this add permit all. So you will later see this endpoint uh, can, can be accessed by everybody um, without having um, a proper JSON web token. So now to create JSON web tokens, I've downloaded the Jotunizer jar from GitHub and we'll switch to a terminal. And if you first run this, um, you have to run this as a classic jar file. And this will then create um, some new files in your directory, which we can have a look at it right now. So it will create the basic token. Um, I've adjusted this already, so the default one looks a little bit different. So I adjusted the issuer, so this is the, the person who issued this JSON web token. We have a lot of other predefined JSON web token claims here. Also the groups. So here you can see I have chief, hacker and admin. And I've added also the not standardized attributes, but we need it for our application, the administrator ID and the administrator level. So if you run it, for the first time, you will see a different one. You have to adjust this, then run it again. So once this is done, then you will get a microprofile config properties file inside here, 
you see the public key. So we need this public key to, to verify the signature in our backend application. So we can copy this for this application. I've configured the issuer here. This is important. This has to match the JSON web token and also specify where the public key is placed. So I'm putting it in a PEM file here and replace it and remove this here. So we could also place it directly inside the microprofile config properties file, like you saw it, but I'm doing it this way for now. So once this is done, we can start our application, create a simple script to do this. So it builds the application with Maven and then starts the Open Liberty server inside a Docker container. Then let's have a look what's going on inside. So, so if you need more information about this Jotunizer, have a look at the page of Adam Bean. He also has a video where he describes how to use it. But for now the application is up and running. And while calling the Jotunizer jar file, you will not probably see it here because it's gray, but it also prints a curl statement which contains the Debera token and the correct token to, to try it out. But let's first start and try to curl our endpoint without a proper authentication. Then we will get here a 401 authorized. So that's working. It says uh, you have to be authorized, you can't access it. Let's try the other endpoint without authentication. So the, the orders one, so here it's working, 200, and we get a result. So now let's copy this and use it. Just have to adjust the endpoint here. And you see, with this proper authentication, we get a 200. We get a result from the backend, um, a JSON result. And inside the console we see here, we as we define in the JAXRS resource, we can print the name of the principal and also its roles. And also our proprietary attributes are, are in there. So if you have special attributes for your application, which needs to be present, you can have access to them here. So that's working. If you're looking for a more advanced setup with Keycloak, have a look at my blog. And uh, there I posted an article, how to use MicroProfile JWT Auth alongside Keycloak and a React front end. So you have a full setup and try it out as the whole code is on, on GitHub. That's everything I want to share with you with the for the MicroProfile JWT authentication. Have fun using it.